And as they spake unto the people, the priests, all right, just to give you the backdrop before we get going. If you remember the last chapter, they found a man outside the temple who was uh, lame. And they looked at him and said, silver and gold, we don't have much to give you, chief. But in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And when they went into the temple, this guy was in there with them and all the people beheld him. And Peter starts to teach and tell them, guys, it's not by us, but it's by the name of Yeshua, whom you crucified. And he starts going off and he's preaching and this is the backdrop and this is where we pick up. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. That's amazing me. Do you see that, Elder? I mean, at every turn these guys got, it was about the kingdom and the hope of the kingdom, and that is the resurrection. I mean, it didn't take them long. They immediately went from a healing to the resurrection. Do you see that? Awesome. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit, many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of men was about 5,000. Awesome. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of a good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Yeshua of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone, speaking of Yeshua, this is the stone which was set of naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Anybody know what that is? The cornerstone. Who's got a good understanding on that? Right? Usually that, that cornerstone will also have the inscription of when that particular building was erected. You go up to any massive Catholic church, find the cornerstone. It'll tell you, at least up in New York, we had a ton of them up there. There were a dime a dozen. Every fourth corner you got on, it was this massive. But you'll see it in the cornerstone. It'll say, established, boom, 1913 or whatever it was. So this new covenant, this new covenant that we're under, this new building, this new temple, right, you and I, that was founded on Christ, the cornerstone, right? That was when it was established. He established it. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given under heaven among men, whereby we must be saved. There's a reason we baptize in the name of Yeshua. When Jesus said, go baptizing them, make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Not names, not titles, name. There is no other name, folks. I, it confuses me that, say, uh, a religion like the JWs, Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't believe in a trinity, yet they baptize that way. In the titles, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Kind of throws me off a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. exercise devils in Jesus' name. They'll marry, well, no, usually they marry and baptize in titles. But like all the other stuff, they'll, 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 pull, they'll pull the name out to cast out a devil and do other certain things. Isn't that interesting? It is. Gee, did you have something you wanted to say? No, just to relay that. Right. You know, this is, this is a home run scripture right here. There is... 
There's no other name given among men where we must be saved. This is why when Peter said in Acts 2.38, repent, be baptized in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> they understood that was the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See, in the Old Testament, we would say uh, Yehovah or Jehovah, right? God revealed himself certain ways to certain people. He, would, uh, he revealed himself as the Almighty to Abraham, revealed himself differently to Moses. So God had many other names that he was going under. But uh, spoiler alert, he's going to have a, a whole new name in the millennium that we're not even aware of yet. Amen. So will you. That's right. Yep. A whole new name. You know, that's why in the Muslim faith, every time somebody comes in, takes their shahada, becomes part of the faith, they rename them. It's like, my name was Eric. Now I'm Muhammad. This is like, what? Boy, you, you are in the wrong place, Eric. Yeah, that's a whole different deal. I'll talk about that later. Oh, boy. <clears throat> now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle has been done by them, and is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we can't deny it. But that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach, in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we've seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which had been done. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they, they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, lost my place, has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For of a truth against thy holy child Yeshua, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto your servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Lord, they're getting on our case, but give us the boldness and the strength to go out and ignore it and do it anyhow. Wow. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of these things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of things that were sold, and laid them at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the county, uh, country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. 
Anybody want anything you want to say here? Really, the chapter shouldn't have ended there. It was kind of a weird place to end it. Anybody? Question? Statement? Okay, we're all on the same page. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own power? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yeah, we sold it for that much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried your husband are at the door and will carry you out. Then she fell down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghosts, and the young men came in and found her dead and carry her, carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Let me just say this. First of all, the Lord's church wasn't going to be built on some foolishness. Do you remember when the Lord established His covenant with Israel in the wilderness, the first, first guy to break the Sabbath? They were like, okay, well, imagine being the first guy. This is what you're known for, being the first guy to break the Sabbath. And, it's like, and getting caught. Yeah, this dude was getting his kindle. He should have did that the night before or something, the day before. And they didn't even know what to do with the dude. They're like, okay, first guy, uh, we haven't gotten this far yet, Lord. They asked Moses, Moses, what do we do? He's like, I don't even know what to do with this guy. This is right. This is new. So they inquire the Lord, what should we do? And the Lord's like, well, just to let y'all know, this ain't going to be built on no foolishness. I mean what I mean, there's not going to be games in the church. Kill this guy. Can I say this too? There's no way we're going to stand on Judgment Day breaking the Sabbath. When that guy broke it, that he'll be the, the testimony and the witness against you. Don't get comfortable breaking the Sabbath, folks. <clears throat> So then you get to Ananias and Sapphira, who, by the way, they didn't, there was no commandment that you had to sell everything you had, sell your extra lands, and start giving it to the church. That was awesome what they did. It was on their own free will. That's why he said, wasn't it in your power? It was yours. But for some reason, y'all come in here fronting. That's what they were doing. That's exactly what they were doing. Right, right. See, they sold the house for like a hundred grand, but they laid it at the church's feet like it was 50. Like, yeah, that's it. Well, we're giving everything. Yeah, we're giving it all like everybody else. Meanwhile, they're pocketing 50 grand. He said it's yours to do that. You didn't have to do all this lying and weirdness. And because of that, I mean, I don't know what this lady was doing for three hours, but wow, did her life change quick. Your husband's dead and he's already buried. She's... What? Oh, yeah, and you're about to, you're about to hold that L2. <laughs> Buy your way out of hell, huh? That's that purgatory junk right there. Good old Sapphire, she's got a leg, and, and hey, this is how they do it. I, my dad, he watched a uh, funeral in the Catholic Church. And they went to the widow and they started saying, your husband's like, certain parts of his body were still in purgatory. We need X amount to pray him out. Totally. Oh, yeah, these Catholics are crazy. Oh, yeah? Oh, Lord God in heaven. Wow. 
Verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. I mean, after something like that, it'd be easy to get in accord with each other. Yeah, yeah, we're on board, no doubt. And of the rest, there's no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them, and the believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes of both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least a shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them that were vexed with unclean spirits. And they were healed, everyone. Then the high priest rose up, and all that were with him, which is uh, of the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened up the prison doors and broke them out. And said, go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together. And all the senate of the children of Israel. And sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, Uh... We shut the doors all safely. And the keeper standing uh, outside the doors, we, we were all there. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching people. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? And this bothered me because I grew up Pentecostal, and in the Pentecostal uh, denominations, you are taught that you will basically find salvation nowhere else but. And if you leave and you uh, question the authority at hand and the pastor and you leave that church, you are basically in rebellion and you are lost until you return. Prodigal son, come home. You imagine the words saying, no man cometh unto the Father, but by Pentecost. <laughs> right? Exactly. She almost puked in her mouth. I don't know what she did, but. No. <laughs> but this is how religion is. This is a religious spirit. Pentecostals ain't different on this topic. If you're a Jehovah's Witness, guess what? If you're a Mormon, guess what? You leave that faith. Oh, dear brother, he's lost his way. But can I tell you something? It was the same religious spirit telling these men not to teach. But what did they do? They disobeyed their religious leaders. Not only did they disobey them, the angels were in on it. They had co-defendants. Right? They had partners in crime like, spirit of man, we got y'all. Get up out of here, badoo. Not only disobey, but go right back to the temple, right in Times Square, and tear it up. These boys early in the morning, because guess what? Nine o'clock was the hour of prayer. So you had a good crowd coming in. Amen. <laughs> Bro, I thought you were arrested last night. I'm, I'm here, baby. We're about to get this, yeah. The Lord bailed me out. The bondsmen don't know about it yet, but they're fixing to. <laughs> then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people lest they should have been stoned. Can I tell you something? They lived in a totally different time. What a wild culture that even the religious leaders were afraid of the people. Now it's quite the other way around. They were ready to check their religious leaders. That don't happen no more in the church. You know how many pastors get away with saying any old thing in a pulpit? They never get checked for it. They do something wrong, the people just sit quiet. We can't check the pastor. 
These jokers were ready to take up stones and start smashing people with them. Yeah. Even the high priests were like, yeah, we, there's certain things we can do here, but these people are crazy. We got a rowdy crowd out here. There's the wild jokers. The, what do you call that? Wild card? What's up, bro? To, to give you <laughs> an example of what you're talking about here, this would be like if you had a, what do they call it in most denominations, like the board, or like the national leaders or the world leaders, right. like, like the 70, quote unquote, most important people together for like, uh, you know, the high council. Right. This, that, except now these were all in Jerusalem. Board meeting. So you had like yeah. the 70 most important people in your denomination. This would be like people from that denomination, just lay people. What he's talking with that guy saying, unless the people stone, he's talking about like that, like the people show up and stone, yeah, like the the top dogs of the religion or the denomination. That's the, today's equivalent. Could you imagine? That's crazy. I'm gonna say something. Crazy. Yeah. 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 did we not command you guys not to teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. See, when I left church and religion, that was the, my exact cry was this. I'd rather obey God than man. You will never go wrong doing that. And uh, luckily, I had, a, I had the support of, a, of an ex-bishop, uh, Brother Vaughn. He was there to greet me on my exit out of Babylon, back to Jerusalem. And he made a video for me. I asked him if he would make a video. Put me at ease. Put other people at ease. And he stopped what he was doing, and he did it ASAP. I mean, as soon as he hung up the phone, it was like 20 minutes later, he had something posted on, on Facebook. And I said, wow, this guy don't play games. And in that video, he explained, you guys are not beholden to me. Right? I'm a pastor, but I'm not, I'm not the final authority here. The Word of God is the final authority. And the moment I start getting away from that, y'all either need to check me, and if I'm not willing to take that, you're not beholden to me. It, it, the buck don't stop with me. <clears throat> Same thing with the Constitution of the United States. We're beholden to the president until he steps outside of the Constitution of the United States. That is what Americans are beheld to. Amen. The Constitution is the final authority in the land. It should be. So anytime a president, no matter who it is, he starts getting beside himself and beside the Constitution, we're not beholden to him. Same thing with the word. You are not beholden to a man or a denomination. You are beheld to the word. Okay? Amen. <clears throat> Say it again. Put it on repeat. Then went the captain, uh, we're in verse 26. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence for the, for the people. Should they stone them? 28, 30. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Man, they ain't pulling no punches here. They ain't beating around the bush. They got straight to it. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are all his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to heart and took counsel to slay them. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth in a little space. And said unto them, You men of Israel, take heed to yourselves. What you intend to do is touching these men. For behold, these days rose up Thaddeus, uh, Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, 
who was slain in all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and leave them alone. For if this counsel or if this work be of men, it'll come to naught. But if it be of God, you can't overthrow it, lest happily you be found to fight against God. Did you hear what he just said? Refrain from these men and leave them alone. If it's of men, it will come to naught. And here we are, on a Sabbath, declaring the same Yeshua, the same resurrection, 2,000 years later. There's no question whether it's of God or not. Even at the mouths of these men. Amen. We stand in good company today. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Amen. Wow! I don't know how I'd act in that situation. You want to beat me up for this? How many of y'all would swing back? <laughs> keep that scramble. Yeah, keep the camera straight, bro. Don't turn. Yeah. Amen. Elder two. All right, he'd swing too. No, 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 I'm not messing. <laughs> Elders would swing. All right. Oh, let's not be a Peter swinging swords here. Right. Position, right? They had legitimate position power. But notice when they got basically rebuked by the apostles, you know, they said, you hung them on a tree, blah, blah, blah. They got enraged and were like, let's kill them. Right? Yeah. Not given any space that maybe it was from God. But then you rewind to David. I always love going back to David. David got called on the carpet by a prophet. And I got to say, Nathan... That's that's a prophet right there. Yeah. He went into the king one on one and called him out. Yes, he did. And most prophets, if the king was not, was a normal king, they walk out with no head. Right. You know, they don't walk out. Right, right. But David had the right kind of spirit. He took the rebuke as from God. Obviously, Nathan lived, obviously, because David, instead of getting red faced and wanting to kill Nathan and say, get this prophet out of my presence. Nathan fell on his own face and repented. These guys didn't fall on their face and repent for crucifying the Lord of glory. Right. They continued to miss the day of their visitation. Right. Mm -hmm. kept trying. Listen, the Lord kept visiting these guys for yeah. years. He spent time in Jerusalem through the apostles trying, and, and many Pharisees, in case you guys don't, many Pharisees came to the faith, got baptized in the name of Jesus, and joined the church, if you will. But Amen. you get you get this, this attitude from these guys who, quote, knew they were right and knew Peter and John and, and the other apostles were wrong. They knew, right? They knew. Or at least they thought they did. And so you see the two different kinds of um, reactions from people in authority. You can have the kind of king like David who understands there's one above all. Right. And you can have the kind like Caiaphas and his, you know, those, those, those elders that were ready to kill these guys. But you had someone like Gamaliel who understood and said, look, he was older. He, he understood. He's like, look, if it's from God, we, it, <laughs> we're kicking against the prick, so to speak. You know, Saul found let's out later. Let, let, let this one play so out. So he's like, just let it play out. So he had wisdom. He did have wisdom. Chapter 6, verse 1. And in those days... The number of the disciples was multiplied. There arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. So they saw... Politics in church, really. Favoritism. Favoritism, right? The Hebrew widows were getting two loaves of bread. The Grecians, I don't know, half a loaf. 
I don't know how that would that was sort of the case. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, Is it not reason that we should uh it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables? Can I tell you something? There is nothing wrong with serving tables. There is nothing wrong with serving tables. Get in where you fit in, baby. And God will bless it. <clears throat> Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among your uh, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost, and they had to have wisdom. There's at least three qualifications right there. They had to have a good report amongst the people, full of the Holy Ghost, and wisdom. Nowadays, it's like, oh, we, uh, we need somebody to take care of this ministry. Well, just whoever's available, just throw them on it. That's how churches do today. Person ain't even got the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the problem. You're putting people in where they don't belong. And God's not in it. And before you know it, it's, it's man doing it on his own. It's not by your power, not by your, your strength, your might. It's by my spirit, <clears throat> says the Lord. Wherefore, brethren, look on seven minutes over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip. Prochorus, uh, Nicanor, Timon, uh, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Seven men, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. You don't have to be the guy who's bringing forth the word every week to be out there in your own doing miracles. It is not limited to this platform. It's not limited to the elders. For heaven's sake, he was taking care of widows. What a humble job. That seems to not be totally under the radar, not even on the list. And here this guy was, I mean, turning the world upside down where he went. The Bible says, seek and you shall find, ask and you will receive. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia, and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suborned, uh, suborned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. False witnesses. Already breaking commandments. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up, a fal uh, set up false witnesses, which said, This man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs of which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Not exactly sure what that means. I mean, yeah, there was a countenance on this man that was different than normal. And we're going to go into this chapter and watch Stephen's defense, and we're going to call it. Then said the high priest, are these things true? Are these things so? And he said, Men and brethren and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham and he, uh, when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Quran, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country from thy kindred, and come into the land, which I will show you. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans, and dwelt in Quran, and from thence 
When his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein you now dwell. He's preaching to the choir. And he gave him none inheritance in it. No, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him when he yet had no child. And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. And after that they shall come forth and serve me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat 12 patriarchs. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. And delivered him out of all afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan and great affliction and our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred three score and 15 souls, 75 people. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died, he and our fathers, and were carried over into Sichem and laid in a sepulcher that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Emor, the father of Sichem. But when the time of promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. When the time of promise drew nigh, the people multiplied. Are you catching that? Amen. That'll preach. Dear heavens. Till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. The same dealt subtly with our kindred and evil and treated our fathers, so that they cast out their young children to the end that they might not live, in which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nursed up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nursed him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full of 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. It may take a while, folks. You may be living in Egypt, but thank God it was about what I, I was about 40 when I visited my brethren in Israel and come back to this faith. Getting out of it. Y'all get what I'm saying, right? Getting out of Babylon and getting back to Israel. Amen. Amen. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptians. For he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them. But they understood not. I'm just now seeing this. He knew his purpose at 40 years old. He was trying to convince them, I'm going to deliver you guys. By my hand, right? What did the Lord say? Not by your power, not by your might. Moses was trying to do it with his own hand. We're going to have to take a 40-year break, chief, and get you right. <laughs> then, we'll, then we'll come back when you're a little older and you know it ain't by your might, buddy. We'll have to get you right. Amen. Y'all might as well get the right spirit now. You'll delay the inevitable. Wow. I'm going to say it again. And the next day he showed himself unto them that they, as they strove and would have set them uh, at one again, saying, Sirs, you are brethren. <laughs> Why do you do one to another? But he that did this neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and judge over us? I'm telling you, he was trying to play the role, man. Early. Wilt thou kill me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at his saying, this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Midian, where he begat two sons. Mind you, this is Stephen talking to the council. And when 40 years were expired, there appeared unto him the wilderness of Mount Sinai, an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. And when Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight and drew near to behold it. And the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am 
the God of thy fathers, of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and durst not behold. Then said the Lord unto him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of your people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning and come down to deliver them, and now I will send you into Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared unto him in the bush. Do you not see Jesus Christ right now? Who made you a judge? By what authority are you doing these things? But what did Moses say? I will send unto you, send unto your people, a prophet like as unto you. Elder? The first time Moses revealed himself, um, they weren't ready, and, and you know, and it, and it wasn't his time to rule yet, right. and so he went away for a generation, basically forty years, yeah. probably long enough for them to almost forget about him. Yeah. But then when he came back the next time, yeah, y'all <laughs> catching that? Mm -hmm. Uh oh, born in his second cup. Wow, yes. this is powerful. Yeah. Oh, the parallels are there. This Moses whom they refused saying, Be thee a ruler and a judge. The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer. He's in a roundabout way telling the council, Stephen, at this point, y'all preaching in this name need to chill, but you don't get it. Like Moses, whom they refused at the first, this is who God had chose. Well, it's what's crazy is he, he knew that they accused him of, of basically blaspheming Moses in the temple. Right. So what does his whole message start with? <laughs> Moses is awesome. And he's like, I love Moses and look to him, you know, as the father of a nation, just like you do. Yeah. So he's basically, he's up to this point, there would have been nothing he said that had them mad yet. Nothing. Because he's just saying, no, 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 Moses is great. Right. Look what God did through Moses. Right. So right now he's like, you know, he's kind of disarming that, but it's coming. Oh, yeah. He's about to drop the foot. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. God sent to be a ruler to deliver by the hand of the angel which appeared unto him in the bush. He brought them out. After that, he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness of uh, 40 years. This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall you hear. Everybody there that he was talking to knew that verse. Everybody that heard Stephen at this point, you're talking about a council that knows the law. They knew the words of Moses, that a prophet would rise like Moses. And Stephen is pleading and making his case. Y'all want to talk about Moses? Okay, let's talk about Moses. This Yeshua, Jesus, this is the prophet that he was speaking of. Him shall you hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the mountain Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us to whom our fathers would not obey but thrust him from them and in their hearts turned again back to Egypt saying unto Aaron, make us gods to go before us. As for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we know not what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifices unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to the worship, to worship the host of heaven. Sun worship is nothing new, people. It's been around for a long time. What verse am I in here? Fortitude. Then God turned and gave them up to worship with the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. O you house of Israel, have you offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? Yea, you took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remphan, figures which you made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of wilderness of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen. 
which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus, Joshua, into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David, who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for God, for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. David couldn't do it. He had too much blood on his hands. Now he's talking about the tabernacle that right. Moses received. So he's totally... Moses, he, see, see, they accused him of perverting Moses and the law and this tabernacle. Mm -hmm. They're trying to say that they're going to tear this building down and he's disrespecting the customs that Moses gave to us. So he's already dealt with Moses. Now he's dealing with the tabernacle. <clears throat> But Solomon built him a house. How be it the most high dwells not in temples made with hands. And y'all know this. You're going to have me some lousy old dude that's not a doctor of the law. God only knows what his profession was. But he was, he was a nobody in the church, really. Very on the low. But God used him mightily and put him out on front street. Amen. And they knew this. They knew God would not dwell in, in temples made with hands. As saith the prophet. Wow. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me? Says the Lord. Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? You stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do you. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, whom you have now been the betrayers and murderers of. Who you have received, uh, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Y'all want to talk about me not keeping the law. You hypocrites, uncircumcised. This dude just signed his death. That's what he just did. But he was feeling the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as lions. When it comes down to it and push comes to shove, and we're backed into a corner and you're living right, you are going to have a point in time where you just can't shut your mouth. Amen. <laughs> Elder? You know what's, what's amazing about this? He does not spend this whole chapter arguing with them. Right. Like a whole sermon. If I can put it in today's thing. 98% he knew they'd be amen in everything he's saying. Yeah. He gets down to like the last two or three sentences. <laughs> it drops and that, and that's, yeah. that's where it was at. It was at the end of it. Yep. And I, literally at the end now, I mean, yeah. you're about to read. But I mean, it, it's crazy. It's like he spends all this time like Moses, yep. Tabernacle, yep. Law, yep. None of us kept it. To us? Talked about how they built calves. Ask Aaron. Mm -hmm. And then he, literally, just the last, just the last bit, he dropped the truth bomb. Yeah. Because they agreed on everything but those last three sentences. His accusers and him, I mean. Unbelievable. I'm going to go back to 52. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? Yeah. See, any time Israel defaulted into rebellion and witchcraft. And a prophet, God would send the prophet. If y'all don't turn... Y'all are going to reap what you sow. You're going you're gonna to feel the punishment. What? Boy, get over here. Wop. This is a common thing. They did this a lot to the prophets. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which showed before the coming of the just one. Wow. Whom you have now been the betrayers and murderers. Yeah, we are determined to lay the blood at your feet. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Y'all are accusing me of not keeping it, but y'all ain't keeping it. Wow, man. Talk about flipping the script. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and gnashed on him with their teeth. Now, I don't know that they actually went up and bit him. There might be a little... Yeah, I think it's more of an expression. I don't think, like... 80 dudes ran up on Stephen and just started going cannibal on the dude because that's against the law. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Verse 
Yeah. You know, when we say uh, kick rocks, we don't, you know, if, if Jews were to read this 80 years ago, they'd be like, kick rocks? Why would people do that? Or we say hit the bricks, get lost. Why would you do these things? Who wants to hit bricks? It just means get away from me. This could be an expression like that. Uh, but he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Yeshua standing on the right hand of God. He was the power. That's the right hand. That's the power. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. That shows you they didn't bite him. It wasn't until he said this that they run up on him. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus. Could you imagine in the middle of being stoned? Receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice. Don't lay this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. I think y'all can feel the power in that. That is powerful. That is amazing. You know, somebody on the job calls you a name. Ooh. <laughs> Cutting her off. Are you just mean? Don't say hi, rude. For a whole year. <laughs> Till a message like this might get a hold of you. That's how we are. Amen. We've been guilty of it. <clears throat> Anyone got anything they want to ask or say? I'll say this. When the Lord did, when they said, Lord, teach us how to pray, and he goes through it, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Let us this day our daily bread, all that. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass to us. <clears throat> Somebody posted on Facebook. They said the most important part of that was, hallowed be thy name. And I said, nah, I'm not buying that. It was a sacred namer. And I said, no, that wasn't it. He, re he expounded on the most important part of that whole prayer, and that is to forgive. He said it twice. You better believe it. <clears throat> this is awesome. This is awesome. I could do this all day, folks. It's only 3.30 for me. Those three verses, each of them together, talk about the weight of the words. To me, it's some of the most beautiful um, uh, captured, you know, from uh, of the early church and the, and the whole word, I think. That last bit where he's getting stoned and he sees him, or right before he gets stoned and he sees him. Yeah. Uh, it's just, that's uh, pretty awesome. It is. I'm glad it's recorded. Amen. Yeah, I think there's a grace. That's where people die. Not always. But sometimes the Lord allows a grace like that. <clears throat> and he knew it was up. That man knew he messed up. <laughs> he laid it on him thick. He signed his own death warrant is what he did. But he didn't care. And what a reward in this life for him to even witness that on his way out. That's amazing. And just as the Lord said, Lord, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Same thing. Same thing. You know, you got to understand when we're on a job, and I don't know why I'm on this, but we've got we've to forgive people, folks. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And there is a, a realm in the spirit. There's a spiritual realm that knows how to get to you, that knows how to get under your skin and yours. And don't think it's, it's something strange that a spirit might get on somebody cause an attitude to come out of nowhere and, and give you some, give you the smoke. Yeah, I want all of it, baby. I want all the smoke. But don't think it's strange. I mean, this is how things work. And you want to know how it really works? That will mean use your spouse. He knows how to get to you. 
Yeah, she's smiling big, bro. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, the enemy be using my husband. Amen. All right, we're all guilty of it. If you're married, you're guilty of it. Don't think I've been used. I know I have. Oh yeah, gotcha. Get that response. Bam, got you too. Now go ahead and do that thing. And think that y'all are fighting each other. No, man. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Your spouse ain't your enemy. Get that out of there. Get that nonsense out of there. We've got to forgive one another. Amen. Sis? Yes, right. Really, in reality, forgiveness is for us. Amen. God transforms us, our thoughts, our minds. Right. And we're the forms of his image more. So when we think about forgiveness, we have to think of it in that perspective. Not that it's for somebody else. It's for us and what God has in store for us. Amen. And, and to build on what you're saying. See, this walk is not built on our feelings. And this is exactly what God's trying to get you away from. When you are commanded to forgive people, it is for yourself to teach you not to be governed by this, your emotions. Because when you don't forgive people, every choice you'll make from that moment on about that person or about the situation that you were in will be governed by your emotions until you get over it. Amen? And you can't possibly judge righteous judgment if you're governed by your emotions. That'll never happen. At what point do we cut these people off and sail them down the river? Love you. I'll say this. Um, it's one thing for a person to wrong you once. You forgive them. I would even say give them the same access they had to you. But if it's a constant thing where they're running you down or they're using you, or they're lying, forgive them. Seven times 70. That's 490 times in a day. That's nuts. Uh, that, that, right. There's, the Lord's just saying there's no number to this. You just forgive, period. Um, forgive. But I would say at some point you can't keep giving everybody the same access to you. Now, that doesn't mean you haven't forgiven them. You just know where to keep them at arm's length. You see what I mean, Elder? I'll say also continue to show ourselves friendly to them, like in passing, like if you're still having to rub shoulders with them, like, like at work or something like that, or if they're family, you can still be friendly, be cordial, yep. but it doesn't mean you got to be buddy, buddy, and all, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's, I think that's fair. Which, but yeah. Helps you now, Jesus. Yes. You can still say good morning. Yeah. So, but here's the thing. If you don't forget, and that's not to say you, you can't forget. Right. Some things are just imprinted in you. And that's not. That's not even your, your fault. Um, I would encourage not to forget, so you don't keep making the same mistake. But always, always, always forgive. Who are we? Who are we? The Lord, He knows our offenses. There's a book. Every idle word we're saying is being wrote. That's scary to think about. But He forgives us, Cornelius. Set them free that day. Amen. Hey, Fran, I had one more song I wanted us to close out with today. It was... Uh...